Ah, this is Brooklyn. St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics and this is Ask the Aquaponics God. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking a little bit about medium that can be used to grow your vegetables in aquaponics. I got a question from one of the members in Aquaponics Paradise, um, Brian. Go ahead um, and jump the line because Brian is already, he's one of the members. He's in the forum. So he asked this question in the forum. He wanted to make a video about it. So I decided to go ahead and make his video um, right now. And it's dealing with which type of medium makes sense to use, you know, when you're trying to compare time, you know, versus spending money. What is going to make sense? Also, there's some more in there that he wants to talk about as well. The size, you know, um, holes that should be used in your floating raft, depending on the type of vegetable that you're going to be growing. We're going to jump into some of that right now. All right, so with that being said, let's get right into this question. I got my computer here, and it says, Hey, Brooklyn, loving the course so far. I'm glad that you're loving the course, Brian, because it hits. It says, I would like to know if you had any suggestions on what the best grow media would be, cost versus time needed, like you teach. So here's, here's how it is, Brian you're pretty much going to be using one of three types of medium um, when it comes to growing your crops in aquaponics, especially when you're dealing with, particularly when you're dealing with, um, let's say, in um, a floating raft system. You can, you can use um, rock wool, you can use an oasis cube, or you can go ahead and use um, some type of um, potting mix, a soilless potting mix something that consists of, you know, vermiculite, perlite, some type of, uh, you know, cocoa core, something of that nature mixed together, right? And either one of these can work. All these grow plants, no problemo. But we're talking about time, you know, versus money. And that's where, you know, that's where you want to get some insight in. So that's what I'm going to break down. So when you're dealing with the rock wool or the oasis cube, you got to understand that these things come manufactured you know, and ready-made. So there's a manufacturer that does all the, you know, the labor. They do that for you already. And they get it shipped to you, so all you have to do, it already has holes uh, placed in there. You know, they got the cubes already, uh, you know, sized to the, you know, the size that you want them. All you need to do is cut them and plant your seed in there and pretty much give them some water. And then, you know, your, your seeds will be ready to germinate. Now, the kicker is, because there's companies that, you know, that manufacture them for you, it's going to cost you, you know, in the form, your, your currency is going to cost you in the form of money. So up front, you're going to pay more to save that time. And that's what, you're, that's what you want to know about. So you're going to pay more, but you're going to save time. And what you do with that save time, that's up to you. You can use that save time to make your money back. If you're doing this for a commercial, you know, a commercial operation, you know, and it makes sense. You use that save time and find a way to make your money back. And that's how those guys play that game. On the other hand, you got the, um, you know, the soilless potting mix. That's going to be, you know, less expensive up front. But the currency you're going to be paying with is going to be your time. Right? You're going to get your, your materials are going to be cheaper. But then you got to go in there. You got to do the labor. You got to mix them together. You know, that has, that's part of it. That's something that you, no one can get around. So you got to pay with your currency or your time in the form of, you know, that's the form of currency. So you got to decide which one makes sense for you. That's what it ultimately boils down to. Which game you want to play and how you want to play it. That's what it's really going to come down to. So me personally, I even though this is a small little um, operation here that I have going, I still go and get the rock wool. I don't have time to be putting together potting mixes. That's me personally. I don't have time for that. I'd rather just pay it up front, you know, and use that time, that save time to go do something else. Other people have a different view on it, and that's fine too. I respect that. I have no problem with that at all. But it all, it's going to, you know, it's all going to boil down to how you see it and how you view it and which one makes sense to you, right? The guys on the commercial scale, they understand they want to save that time. So they're going to go ahead and order the rock wool, save that time. That time that they saved, they're going to try to use that time to go put invest in marketing, 
to go and get that money back and plus more. That's the game that they're playing. You see what I'm saying? That's how it really boils down. That's how it really boils down. So that's that's pretty much what how I would break that down for you. It's going to depend on you know how you look at it. All right. So let's jump back and see what else you got. I would like to start with a seed. So I don't know if there was an easy solution to take it from there all the way to the DWC raft. Um, you're talking about. I think you're talking about. Let me see. The seed, I don't know if there's an easy way to solution to take it from there. I'm not sure if you're talking about transporting it or if you're talking about, you know, um, putting it in the stages. I'm assuming you're talking about the stages. You know, um, so what I do is, you know, I will germinate the seeds indoors, uh, you know, for a good part of the year. Depending on the weather, it might be outdoors. I'll germinate them in, a, you know, 10 by 20 um, trays with my rock wool cubes. And then once they germinate, depending on the space that I have in my raft, if it's an empty space, you know, and I'm not, I don't have a, a rotation going, then I'm going to directly plant them in the raft. If there's space taken and, and I'm, on, I'm on my, um, you know, I got my stuff already scheduled out, you know, I'm on point, then I'm going to go ahead and let them sit in a little ceiling area that I have set up, situated on top of the sump in the, um, on the raft, on this raft system. I'm gonna let them sit in there for a few weeks while the plants in here mature. And when it's time to get their behind out of here, then the you know the seeds or the seedlings they'll be ready to be transplanted in there. You know I'll keep that rotation going. You know I have them you know seedling stage. You know once they mature they get their behind out of there. They take their behind from the seedling stage and they go in here. You keep that going. It's almost like juggling. You know you keep that going. That's the process you want to keep going to have continuous harvest. That's how I break it down. But if there's empty space, like I said, I'll just directly put them in there. And that's how I would, um, you know, would have that set up. All right, let's see what else you got. Also, what size holes should I use on my raft? I plan on growing a variety of vegetables and herbs, but I would like to keep the system parts as simple as possible. So the whole size that you should use for your raft is gonna depend you know, on the vegetables that you're growing. And this is very, very important to pay attention to. Very important to, uh, to pay attention to. I think on here you mentioned, yep, I've seen rafts that offer a one inch hole that fit one inch rock wool and therefore do not require net pots. It seems like this is a very simple solution, but I worry that the one inch hole is not enough room for a mature plant and all of its roots. I would really love it if you can make a video where you cover this subject Started with growing into the, with germination, going to the transplant to the rafts. Okay, so I went over that part, but back to the, um, the size holes. Like I said, it's very important to understand. You got to understand which plant you're going to be growing. That one inch, that does make sense, but it depends on the variety. What, what, what type of plant are you growing? If you're growing quick growing crops, annuals, you know, cr uh, crops that are going to take less than one year, typically less than one year to grow, well, actually they're going to be a lot less than that, you know, two, three months. You know, your, your crops like your, um, your lettuce, spinach, you know, Swiss chard, if you grow it as a, um, a quick annual, your kale, arugula, a one inch could work. That does work. I have one inch here on the, um, the NFT. Those are one inch slots that are, that are located in there. Now, if you grow them quick, you know, your lettuce, all that, there's plenty of room in there. Just enough room once they mature for the, um, the stem and the roots, you know, and that's not a problem. But if you let them grow out, like if I, I have some Swiss chard in here that I've been, grow, I've been letting it grow out way too long for those one inch holes. Way too long. I probably had these in here for about three or four months. That's way too long for that, you know, size of a hole. But they still have been growing. But when you look at them, there's going to be incisions that are getting cut into the stem. And that's not a good thing. That's blocking flow of roots, uh, of nutrients um, coming from the roots and water going into the leaves. That's not a good thing. So I'm getting ready to take these out. Now, if this were to happen, because this, as the plant matures, you let these Swiss chard, because you can let Swiss chard and, and kale, you can, they, can, they can be grown as biannuals, you know, two years, depending on, you know, where you're located at. So if I, you know, as these begin to mature, the stems start to thicken. They're getting real thick, and that one inch is not enough. Right now, if I place them in the raft, 
and I had a one inch hole and tried to place it and grow them out, you know how I've been growing it out here and those stems start to thicken, it's probably going to crack, you know, your floating raft. It's probably going to crack it. So in that circumstance, if you're going to try to grow them out for a longer period of time, you're going to want to use a three inch hole, you know, and use three inch net, uh, net cups. And then I would use a one and a half inch rock wool. That's what I use for these. I got some more that's going to be grown out. And the ones that I have already uh, grown out before, you know, if you're going to grow them out longer, you know, than a, a quick grow, uh, a grow cycle. For the cucumbers right here, and the cucumbers are hitting right now too. The cucumbers, I got these in a three inch net pot, you know, with the one and a half inch rock wool. And they're going to be growing out, you know, for the duration of this, um, of the life cycle. No problemo. You know, on all the rest of them here too, the watermelon, you know, I got some peppers behind me, some squash back there, all of those are the same thing. You're going to want to, if you're growing that type of plant, then you're going to want to go ahead and upgrade. You're not going to want to be trying to mess with no one inch, you know, a hole and thinking that's going to get the job done because it's not. Right? So be very, very mindful of that. That's the most important part is knowing which crop you're going to be growing. But other, other than that, quick growing crop, that one inch will work. It will hit. Right, so hopefully that has helped you out, Brian, and has um, I've walked you through uh, some of the things that you wanted some help with. Um, let me know uh, back in the forum if you have any follow-up questions with this uh, with this via uh, this video, and then you know I'll respond there. For you guys, you know the other guys out there, if you guys need more help, you know you can always feel free to leave a question below. You know, let me know what what you want to know about, and I'll be able to break a video down and help you guys out. I love helping you guys out. I appreciate you guys. Um, asking the questions and letting the aquaponic guy do his thing. You know, it keeps me on my P's and Q's when I'm going through these questions. And um, it just, a lot of times it brings me back on some of the things that I haven't, you know, haven't visited upon for a long time, things that I forgot about. It allows me to revisit those things, you know, and kind of like, you know, uh, brush up on it. So it's always a good thing. I love seeing you guys' questions, helping you guys out, because I've been there. I've been that guy, knowing nothing and needing help. So I love doing this, and this is my thing, right? Also, if you guys um, need more information, click on the link below, get you a free course, get you the free aquaponic starter guide, you know, show you how I build and operate uh, an aquaponic system, you know, go to the school of aquaponics.com, enroll in aquaponics paradise, learn the fundamentals of aquaponics, and that's going to give you the shortcut, you know, and that's going to allow you to get growing, just like my man Brian is doing right here. All right, so hopefully it has helped you guys out. Brian, hopefully that has helped you out, my man, you know, and, and let me know if you need anything else uh, in, aqua, in the aquaponics form. All right, with that being said, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics reminding you to stop walking and get you a car. <laughs>